Good morning. Glad that you're here. Um, I had class yesterday and I left early. I'm going to have to try and see if I can make my time different so I can get on every day. But today we have our day of the word or our word of the day <laughs> and the word is acrid. So we're going to go ahead and get into the study of the word acrid as uh, we open and pray. Lord, I just thank you for this day and I thank you for your word. Thank you that you love us and that every single question has an answer in your word. Everything that we need to know is already given to us. And Lord, I just pray that you would help us to understand better who you are and what you've done for us so we can apply it to our own lives. And I just thank you and praise you in Jesus name. Amen. All right. The word acrid. So it is an adjective and uh, it does come from, we. I'm getting the word of the day from uh, wordthink.com. So acrid means unpleasant taste or smell, angry or bitter. Okay, so when I take that word and I look into different um, texts in the Bible, it, different verses in the Bible, the first one I came up with is Isaiah 65.5. And in Isaiah 65, 5, it says, Yet they say to each other, Don't come too close, for you will defile me. I am holier than you. These people are a stench in my nostrils, an acrid smell that never goes away. So that's in the New Living Translation. So when we take that word and we dig a little deeper, we go into different uh, translations of the Bible. So I'm using the Bible study tools, comparetranslations.com. And when you go there, you could look up that verse and see what it says in different versions to see, maybe get a better meaning of it. So in the New King James Version, it says a fire that burns all day. Or in the Good News Translation, it says my anger against them is like a fire that never goes out. The message says, these people gag me. I can't stand their stench. Now, who is this talking? Who is this saying this? Well, when we look in the notes, um, and I'm in a life application Bible. When I look in the notes for Isaiah 63, 5, it says, God said to these people, God said these people directly disobeyed his laws when they worshiped and sacrificed to idols, consulted the dead and evil spirits, so sacrificed food, to, worshiped and sacrificed to idols was obviously not worshiping and sacrificing to God. So that's not okay. Consulted the dead and evil spirits. That's like going to a um, palm reader and, and trying to hear from the dead. And ate forbidden fruit, ate forbidden foods. So when they did that, it was the food that was sacrificed to these idols. So that's not food that you should be taking in. They did all these things, yet they were so perverse that they still thought they were more sacred than others. Jesus called such people hypocrites. So we would call people hypocrites that say, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, but then they do other things that are just as bad. So let's not be a hypocrite, right? God is saying those people are a stench in his nostrils. We don't wanna be a stench in God's nostrils, right? So when we look at Isaiah 65, 5, we see that I summarized it in that my superiority is a stench to God. So I don't want to try and look down on other people. I want to see others the way God sees them, right? Okay. So our next verse for today that has to do with the word acrid. Now, acrid, remember, has several meanings, the unpleasant taste or smell or angry and bitter. So there's lots of verses on anger and bitterness. So the one I got was Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. Let all bitterness, which would be acridness, and wrath and anger, another word for acridness, and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ forgave you. And that's in the New American Standard Bible. So... If you look at that and we go to different translations of what that means, in the message it says, make a clean break with all cutting, backbiting, and profane talk. We don't need to talk bad about other people. We don't need to look down on them and we don't need to try and criticize others, right? Because God doesn't criticize us. 
God loves us the way we are, so we should also love others the where, where they're at, right? And try to consider where they're at. The New International Revised Version says, get rid of all hard feelings, anger, and rage. So that would be another form of acridness. Uh, the BBE, I don't know, Bible, I don't know what the BBE translation stands for. I'll have to write that out next time. That version, that translation says, let all bitter, sharp, and angry feelings and noise and evil words, those are all forms of acridness, something that's anger and bitterness. We want to put away all of those things. Noise and evil words are the same as bitter and sharp and angry feelings. They're all put together in something that's causing us to have separation from God, right? So what does that mean? It means that we need to if we look at it, Christ gave, forgave me so I could forgive, not to be a stench with my right of entitlement. And you've seen that. And you've probably been that. I've been that. Well, I had the right of way. I had this just yesterday. I was driving on the road. And yeah, I was driving. And the guy felt like he was entitled to the road. And I felt I was entitled to the road. So he got angry. And I proceeded to continue on because I wasn't going to stop on the highway. But Rights of entitlement happen. And when we have those rights of entitlement where we feel we are more important than others, that's a stench to God. That is a form of acridness in the eyes and or in the smells and the taste of God. He doesn't want us to feel entitled. He wants us to feel dependent on him. We need to rely on him. We need to know that he has got us and that it's not all about us. It's all about him. And how can we share him? And I'm telling you this because I'm just as guilty. That's one of the things I struggle with. So the last verse I came up with um, that I found in regard to the word acridness or acrid was in Isaiah 38, 17. And it said, lo, for my own welfare, I had great bitterness, acridness. When I am concerned about me and my well-being and my needs being met, it is bitterness to me, right? It is you who kept my soul from the pit of nothingness. God is the one that keeps my soul from the pit of nothingness. For you have cast all my sins behind your back. And that's also in the New American Standard Bible. So nothing should really cause us to have such a fear for tomorrow that we don't have this or we don't have that because God's got us. All our sins are behind God's back. All our sins have been cast away. When we believe in Jesus Christ and we have faith in him, our sins are not before us. We do not stand before God guilty. So what, what could really be that important? God has already cast his sins behind us and we are okay in him. And that's where we need to remember where we are and where we stand. Other versions, that BBE version says, my soul had bitter sorrow. We develop bitter sorrow when we become consumed with our own welfare for uh that and then in the message version it says for me to go through all these troubles when we are consumed about our troubles we can't be focused on anyone else's troubles because we are all about us and we need to let god have our troubles right casting our cares upon him because he cares for us and because he cares for us and in our troubles we can care for others because our sins have been cast behind us. So there is nothing that holds us back, right? And in the NIRV version, New International Revised Version, it says, I suffered great pain. Our, our suffering of pain is relative. I, I'm not discounting anyone's pain. There are heart-wrenching and horrible things we go through. But God. We do not go through them alone. God is there with us through those things. And when we look at the notes for Isaiah 38, 47 in the Life Application Bible, we see 38, 38, oh, 38, 17. When we look in the notes, we see that it was Hezekiah that was writing this. And he realized that his prayer brought deliverance and forgiveness. His words, death cannot praise you, may reveal that he was unaware of the blessedness of the future life for those who trust in God. 
or he may have meant that dead bodies cannot praise God. In either case, Hezekiah knew that God had spared his life. So in his poem, Hezekiah praises God. Hezekiah recognized the good that came from his bitter experience. Do we realize the good that has come from our bitter experience? God doesn't expect us to pretend that our bitter experience in the middle of it is good. God is saying that when we get through that bitter experience, we can recognize the good that came from it. The next time you have a difficult struggle, pray for God's help to gain something beneficial from it. When we don't gain anything beneficial from a bitter experience, from a heartache or a heartbreak, then usually you're destined to repeat it because you didn't get it. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to keep repeating bitter experiences. I want to learn whatever God can show me through that. And God is there to show us through that because he is there with us in it. You are never alone. And God wants us to know that today. So we see that, I summarized it in um, Isaiah 38, 17, that allowing Christ to keep my soul is peace. You want peace today? Allow Christ to take care of it. Don't try and hold everything in the palm of your hand and grasp it so tight because then God can't take control of it because he doesn't force us. We have to willingly open our hands and give it to him. Being consumed with my own welfare is a stench to God. When we are so consumed with us and not consumed with him and love for him and love for others, we are a stench to God. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be a stench to God. I want to be a blessing to God and I want to be a blessing to others. So I hope that this shows you that any word that we find any day of the week can be found in our in the word of God. And God gives us a, a study on it and God can show us what he wants us to learn through anything. So I just found that really awesome today. I hope that you do too. I hope that it causes you to want to dig in and grow more in your walk with God. And I just thank you so much for your time to spend with me here. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God bless.